the vacuum pump. Why do we use vacuum pumps in refrigeration systems? Well, early on, we did not use uh, vacuum pumps. What we did is if a system was broken open, the refrigerant was taken out, the atmosphere is in there, of course that means moisture and assorted other non-condensable gases were in the system. Well, we purged them out. That simply meant we dumped refrigerant on one side and we purged out the other side until we felt we had refrigerant coming out. The problem with that was it was not complete. It did not go everywhere. It didn't pull all the non-condensables out. Non-condensable is anything that will not participate in the refrigeration. Uh, so you had these contaminants that were still in the system and as they worked through the system they just kept going through and going through and they would cause corrosion in the system. There's oil breakdown, uh, even rust inside these systems. So we came up with the idea of saying we should only have refrigerant and oil in the system. So they came up with a vacuum pump. Now vacuum pump is just like any other type of pump except the suck side of the pump will suck a very very deep vacuum. And of course a vacuum as far as we're concerned is anything below zero PSIG. You can never get all the way down to a perfect what would be called the perfect 30 inch mercury vacuum but you can get pretty close. So we started using these things. They uh, made a considerable difference in longevity of equipment and efficiency of equipment. But the one thing about vacuum pumps that needs to be looked at is they have to pull a very, very low vacuum. That vacuum is, uh, whereas not a, it, you can't read it on the gauges, the gauge set's not going to tell you if, if you're right. It'll show 29 inches of vacuum or something, but that's meaningless. It could be way off of that uh, because the gauge is not accurate. So we came up with micron gauges, which a micron is one thousandth of a millimeter of mercury. And so these things on a system had to be able to bring down the vacuum to around 500 microns. Now that's a, a complete system with oil and everything in it. And remember, you actually boil a little bit of the oil when you get way down in these vacuums. It'll actually boil some. Because as with anything, if I lower the pressure, I lower the boiling point. So... Uh, we came up with these and this one here I'm showing you is just a standard old pump. Uh, it is two stage and this is what we use. It's actually two vacuum pumps in a row. Motors here, pumps here. So uh, when I take out of the taps here then I am pulling a vacuum with the first stage and the second stage is is pressuring it up farther so we're only going halfway with each stage that gives you the best vacuum you're going to get and any vacuum pump anymore that we use should be two stage we used to use single stage ones many many years ago uh, but we're not using them anymore because the two stage it will bring down the vacuum better and faster. Okay, let's take a quick look at a few things that are on this pump. Now, this is a direct drive pump. They're all direct drive anymore. Okay, this is where the pump is. This is where your oil level line is. It's got a mark here on the center. Should be lower third to upper third on the oil level. It uses a special oil. Do not use refrigerant oil or 
motor oil or any other silly thing in here you use vacuum pump oil it's the only stuff that will work well for these things the oil should also be changed after every evacuation it loses its ability to pull a deep vacuum the more you use it, it tends to get moisture in it and so on like that so levels got to be uh, right there you got a drain right here and you can drain it out and refill okay refill cap here obviously you simply pull it off and put oil in it discharge is right here now you don't block that off in any way or anything okay here's the inlet taps here the bottom one is uh, simple quarter inch that fits with your gauge set this top one is 3 8 so if you have a 3 8 vacuum line which a lot of gauge sets do anymore you can use it uh, the idea behind having the larger vacuum line is because we're dealing with such small pressures it's better to have a larger line to reduce pressure drop because there is pressure up in these things uh, you can get these things uh, set up differently than this one there can be a valve right here that you can shut it off with some of them even have a little gauge on them I really would prefer not to have those accessories uh, some of the the valves work okay but I've had a lot of them leak and there was more of a service problem so I'm kind of I would just as soon have one that had no valve at all okay last thing in these pumps is cubic feet per minute you can see that where it says capacity five cubic feet uh, I've seen them as small as two, there's some that are over ten. Uh, five is probably fine for small to medium sized units. I think maybe if I'm running something like a you know, 10, 15 ton rooftop unit, it might be better to have a, say an eight or ten. Uh, but these will these will do most of the things you need to do. I don't think I'd just jump in to oversize these things because they don't need to be all that big okay that's just kind of an overview on the uh, vacuum pump we'll go into how it's hooked up and set up and how to use it and so on soon